Ah, a new year dawns in California. The weather is beautiful, the palm trees look great, it's always 75 degrees at the beach, the Dodgers and Lakers are reigning world champions in baseball and basketball, and if you're a politician in California, that means you get an opportunity to introduce more insane new California taxes and proposals. That's right, folks. On today's video, I'm going to share the craziest new California tax proposals being introduced by the state's progressive legislators, which will just continue to drive that sword deeper into the heart of California and cause more people, businesses, and jobs to leave the state than ever before. If you live in California, you plan on coming here, or you're planning on leaving, this is definitely a video that you want to watch. Let's go. Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Danny, and if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for stopping by. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for supporting this channel. Next week, I am going to be announcing this month's giveaway. In the last few months, I gave away an iPad and an Apple Watch, and I'll be giving away something really cool each month this year. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and also join my text community so that you don't miss out on those giveaways. Now, I recently made this video right over here about the proposed California wealth and exit tax, and it's quickly become the number one video on my channel with over 400,000 views. That's really amazing, you guys. I want to thank you, and if you want to check that video out, you can watch it right up here. Now, if you thought that that wealth and exit tax was the last dumb proposal to come out of Sacramento, you would be dead wrong because they're just getting started pushing their progressive exodus-inducing taxes and bills down the throat of the state. As I'm sure you know by now, in addition to being the year of the pandemic in California, 2020 was also the year of the mass exodus, as many celebrities, wealthy individuals, and companies realized, hey, wait a second, I don't have to put up with this bullshit in California. We can work from anywhere. Of course, Gavin Newsom and the rest of the politicians in California are completely oblivious to this and continue to rely on the fact that the weather, the beaches, and the familiarity with the state will trump the ridiculously unfriendly business climate, high taxes, crazy regulations, and absurd lockdowns, business, and school closures. Thankfully, a recall effort to rid our state of Mr. French Laundry himself has gained a ton of momentum. There are currently over 1.1 million signatures already. We need 1.5 million to complete the recall, so it's looking pretty good. By the way, the best way to support the recall effort is to hit the like button on this video and make it turn blue because then YouTube is going to show it to more people and we can spread the message. The link is also in the description below so you can sign the petition down there if you really want to support the effort. Assembly Bill 71 was recently introduced by Luz Rivas and David Chu, not surprisingly both Democrats. And on the surface, this bill sounds great as it aims to create a homelessness solutions fund called the Bring California Home Fund. Isn't that nice? As you may have heard, we have just a little bit of a homeless problem here in California. I actually talked about that in detail on this video right over here. And if you live in California or you've been here recently, you may have seen the homeless encampments that have popped up, well, everywhere under freeway overpasses, at Venice Beach, downtown LA, and pretty much everywhere else. California's solution to the issue like pretty much every other solution proposed in California, makes absolutely no common sense. Here's what they want to do. AB 71 proposes to fund $2.4 billion annually by, well, if you guessed raising taxes, you would be correct. And that's because California's politicians only have two answers for every problem. Raise taxes and increase regulations. Here's how they want to do it. Number one, increase the corporate income tax to historically high rates. Number two, increase the personal income tax for anyone in California making more than $1 million. Number three, eliminate or limit corporate tax loopholes. 
Number four, add a mark-to-market method of taxing unrealized capital gains. And number five, repeal the step-up in basis for inherited assets. Now, I'm going to review each of these in a little more detail, but first I wanna address something that I keep seeing in the comments section of my videos about California. But Danny, these things don't apply to me. I don't make millions of dollars. I don't own a company. Why should I care? Why do you keep telling me about all of these taxes? In just a minute, I'm going to tell you exactly why you should care irrespective of how much money you make. If you live in California or you're thinking of coming here, I guarantee you that you are going to be affected by this proposal if it is passed. The fact of the matter is that people have choices on where they live and companies have choices on where they operate their businesses. That was proven true in 2020. For the longest time, California got away with the fact that it has the beaches, the sun, Silicon Valley, lots of talent coming out of colleges and other reasons to stay here. The pandemic really threw that value equation out of whack because people suddenly realized that you can really work from anywhere and you don't have to put up with all of this political nonsense. The fact that California has been the most locked down state hasn't really helped either. When you increase corporate and personal taxes even more, like AB71 wants to do, that will just drive more people and businesses away from the state. But where I really want to focus is the last two parts of the proposal. Let's start with the mark to market method of taxing unrealized capital gains. This is a progressive politician's dream. And let me explain how it works. Currently, the way that capital gains taxes work is that when you buy an asset and it appreciates over time, you only pay taxes on the gain when you sell that asset. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you click the link below in the description, you open an account at Webull, you put in a hundred bucks and you get four free stocks valued at up to 1600 bucks each. Let's say you buy some more stock and you hold on to all that stock. As it appreciates over the next few years, you have gains, which currently just sit there. You don't have to pay taxes on them. Nothing really happens until you sell those stocks. That seems to make logical sense, right? But with a mark to market system, you would start paying taxes on that unrealized capital gains, even if you don't sell the stock. So guys, let's say for example, your stock portfolio grows by hundred grand next year and you're in California's highest tax bracket, you would owe California $133,000, even if you don't sell the stock. If you're thinking that this is absolute insanity, how can you be required to pay taxes on gains that you haven't even realized yet? Well, welcome to California politics. In addition to just being a ridiculous proposal, this type of system disincentivizes saving and investing in publicly traded assets, meaning people are less likely to buy stocks and it greatly increases the administrative burdens on the taxing authority so they have to spend more money. The Tax Foundation, which is an independent tax policy nonprofit, says that overall moving to a mark to market system without lowering capital gains tax rates would increase the tax burden leading to a reduction in income. And of course, California wants it both ways. They want to add that mark to mark system and they want to keep capital gains tax rates the same or even raise them. It's a recipe for disaster. Let's also talk about the last component of this plan, which is a repeal in the step up basis for inherited assets. Here's how this one works. So currently guys, if you inherit an asset and let's use the most common example of real estate, the tax basis on that asset is increased or stepped up to the fair market value at the time of the person's death. So for example, let's say that you inherit a house that someone bought 50 years ago for let's say 50 grand and it's now worth a million dollars. That's a common scenario here in Southern California. Your tax basis on that property would be a million dollars. So if you were to sell it, you won't owe any taxes on the gain. However, if that step up in tax basis provision is repealed, then with the same example, you would owe California tax on the entire capital gain. So using our same example, your gain would be $950,000 and you would owe California a cool $126,350. When you take all of the components of AB 71 together, it's just pure insanity. 
Let's raise taxes even more on individuals, businesses, and everyone else. And then let's make you pay taxes on gains you haven't even realized and on inherited assets. The effect of this bill would simply be that even more people and businesses would leave the state and less people would want to come here, start companies here, and invest in the state. California is already losing jobs and companies at a record pace, and this would only escalate that departure even more. Between 2010 and 2018, California's tax base shrank by almost $25 billion. Clearly, the state's policies aren't working, and at the same time, the politicians just are not getting the message. Why would someone want to buy investment property, for example, in California and deal with these crazy taxes and all this other nonsense when they can just go to another state that has zero tax, like, say, Texas or Florida? Now, as promised, let me also tie this in for you if you're thinking that this won't affect you. Look, guys, I try to read as many of the comments on my videos as possible, and I want to thank you for those. Many people believe that these kinds of taxes won't really affect them and they think that their lives will actually be improved by taxing those evil rich people and the big bad corporations. Unfortunately, you guys, that is not how it works. These kinds of taxes will 100% affect you no matter how much money you make because if people and companies leave, then jobs go with them. If people don't wanna invest in real estate or other assets in the state, that will drive prices of homes and other things down because there's less demand. So even if you're not directly affected by this proposal, you are affected because there's less opportunity, there's less employment options, and there's just overall less prosperity in the state over the long term. It also creates a downward spiral because as the tax base shrinks, California will just have to keep raising taxes on whoever is left that can actually pay them, which is becoming less and less people. Obviously, that can't continue forever. Now guys, look, we need to solve the state's homelessness problem, but insane taxes are not the answer, especially when the politicians wanna turn right around and do some stupid stuff like use that money to build housing in the most expensive areas of Los Angeles. Check out this proposal in Venice that would end up costing upwards of $600,000 per unit to house homeless. Basically, Nothing being done in Los Angeles and California makes any common sense. There are solutions to the homeless crisis available that don't require $2.4 billion in annual spending. Bills like this are a classic example of why people and companies are leaving California in record numbers and why the state is being run into the ground by these progressive politicians. I say that kindly. What do you think about this proposal? If you're in California, would this type of tax make you consider leaving the state? Even if you're not someone who would be affected by this, what do you think? Maybe you live somewhere else and you have a comment about it. Let me know in the comments below. One of my favorite things about this YouTube channel, you guys, as I've mentioned, is reading and responding to your comments. And I really look forward to chatting with you. Be sure to follow me on your favorite social channels. Text me so that you know about the next giveaway and everything else going on with me and my channel. Get those free stocks at Webull. Thanks again for tuning in and I will catch you on the next video.